And here we go, right into the round where we have Team Greenleaf versus Team Construct in this best of three, the Forts Pro League season. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have on the left hand side, it is Team Greenleaf playing as the Spook Commander. It's Vicro and Drenistian. It looks like they're going for what is, I would say, is a pretty standard opener. They have rear wind turbines as well as their basic technology already ready to go. Uh, selling off some of their unnecessary bits of their fort so they can go a little bit faster. They're facing off against their opponents. It's Team Kongstruct, playing as the Seep Commander. You know what that means. That means we're going to see a workshop and some missiles. That's right. Teutonic and Cloud are playing with one of the more aggressive commanders. It looks like they're going to be going with the one player rushes nukes while the other player rushes support style of Seep. Uh, so we are going to see Cloud here go with the double swarm missile launchers already placed. And he's going to be placing down an upgrade center, I imagine, right in this position here as it usually goes. Whereas Teutonic on the bottom here is going to be going for more support weapons. We're going to see... Well, honestly, we do, we do have a couple different options here for support. Uh, the... I'm going to say the more intuitive and common way is via flak and shotguns however we have seen we have seen play styles that use rockets which has i would say has been more common recently it's kind of gained more popularity to use rockets and instead of shutting down the opponent via uh, and instead of shutting down the opponent via just map control with flak and shotguns instead applying additional pressure in a more constant form that prevents the opponents from properly defending against things like these swarm missiles and the nukes as they inevitably come. It looks like actually Cloud is going to be going for a riskier variant, where instead of getting a... instead of keeping their workshop, they'll instead sell off their workshop and uh, get the... use those same minerals to build the upgrade center. Uh, this does allow the nukes to come out a little bit faster by virtue of having more money to play with, but... This does mean they won't be able to transition out of it at any point in time. Indeed, we do see Teutonic building an EMP, which does mean that we're going to see an upgrade center, as well as... Oh, oh wow, they're going for the fire beam option, then, it would seem. That's, uh... That's risky. This is something we don't often see, especially not at this level. Um, it's possible. I've seen it work before. However, going with the fire beam and the heavy weapons with the nuclear support is... It's slow. It's very slow. And it it just isn't faster than what we're going to see the other players do. Like Dranistian, for example, has a heavy laser already under construction, whereas Teutonic does not. Because Teutonic has spent on things like this EMP and additional base structure. There, Teutonic just places the heavy laser now. So this means that this is ostensibly one unprotected nuke that's going to be launching at approximately the same time as their opponents are getting out their heavy weapons. And barring that support from Teutonic, um, that nuke doesn't really have a great opportunity to land. And without the massive damage from the nuke, uh, Team 2 is just going to be in the back, just a just a little bit behind Team Green and Leaf here. So I am curious to see how that's going to work out. And now, it is, of course, still a nuke. There's always, always, always a chance that it gets through. But it's generally not a plan I see often as... Oh no, Vicro with the self-destruct. You hate to see it. Team Greenleaf in a rare, in a rare showing of uh, architectural engineering disasters. Loses a player, that's gonna cause a problem. Vicro was going for cannons. There will be no cannons in this match. Question then is, can Dranistian come back from this 
even the odds and make the differences. That is, that's just, it's so painful to see. The nuke gets shut down by Dranistian's defenses. Just a couple gunners spread across the base is enough. Cloud coming in with a double shotgun. Excellent job. Clearing out the machine gunners for himself is going to be able to uh, have a much, much stronger chance to get that nuclear option across the field. Looks like Teutonic is about ready to fire. His weapons are now complete and is adding doors. Nice heavy hit. Greenleaf is sending a full charged plasma shot right into Cloud's foundation. Cloud had the defenses necessary to hold it. Oh yeah, that nuke is clear across the field. The shotgun's clearing it out. There's nothing stopping it. It lands, does massive damage with the plasma follow-up. Dranistian takes a heavy hit here. It isn't enough to knock him off. To eliminate him from the round, but that's that's the kind of damage you don't come back from before the next volley hat. This is not the world you want to be in as Dranistian. And with a door snipe, Dranistian loses his only heavy weapon, leaving him with no real firepower. A sitting target strapped to the bottom of an abyss. Nuclear missiles coming directly at you. And heavy lasers with the follow-up. This is, uh... This is looking particularly uh, unwinnable for Dranistian here. He's still trying. Rebuilding those sniper... Oh, no! The shotguns. Vicro's remnant base. Any and every last piece of economic power that Vicro had has now been completely destroyed. Scorched Earth scoured from the base. Dranistia no longer has any any benefits from Vicro's old base. Nukes go wild. Dranistian lives this time. They're hanging in there. Greenleaf is not giving up. I am. I just don't see a path to victory here. Um, portals could work well for a short time. Even then, the EMP is on the field, which is the hard counter to portal, so it's not a real option, but it at least could potentially delay those nukes from landing. No, there's, there's, there's no way. There's no way. Between the swarm missiles and the portals, like, uh, the shotgun just immediately punishes the sniper. As Greenleaf, you've got to try something. It looks like he's just going to try rebuilding his heavy laser. Maybe, maybe just a fire beam. He's opening it up with... He's starting it off with an energy shield, which I think is a wise decision. Because in practice, the laser weaponry is uh, the premium weapon for sniping out weapons while under construction. So we can expect those laser beams to be targeting weapon emplacements, which is what we see there. Oh, getting that energy shield first renders it immune to energy weaponry. And I think Dranistian is actually saving up, trying to get the heavy laser as opposed to just building fire beams. Should be able to place it now. And there it is. Doesn't quite land the snipe AA. Oh no, that's close. Had that gone any amount further, that laser beam would have eliminated at least a couple of Dranistian's metal miners here. Uh, loss of any metal miners results in uh, very bad for Dranistian. Not that 
Dranistian is already in a particularly unfortunate scenario. But loss of mines means that there's truly nothing Dranistian can do to even attempt to come back. Uh oh. Another round of shots right into the foundation could end it right here. And the laser beam follow up. Wait, does Teutonic doesn't have the energy to fire it. Alas. Dranistian will be allowed to rebuild. Oh, the nuke almost gets sniped out of the pack. It's not quite enough. Uh-oh. Dranistian's foundations. They have been sold off. Or at least half of them. He's got quite a scarce little bit of uh, struts there. It's leaving it a bit deformed and loosely attached. Here comes another volley. And it hits. Dranistian, using this spaced armor tactic, has uh, managed to mitigate most of the damage from that nuke. But, as we can see here, its base is crumbling. It's not being rebuilt to the same size that it was before the land before the uh, the missiles landed. Uh, however, he has delayed his demise, and Dranistian's heavy laser is back online. Question is, will it be enough? What can you do with this? Typically from this position, you want to try to door snipe because that's the most damage you can do with a single shot. With the uh, impulse on his base, the laser is swinging to and fro. It's unable to focus its fire under a single position, leaving it um, unable to actually deal any damage, which not the world you generally want to live in when firing your heavy laser. That is a significant amount of damage. Rockets, as you guys know, are incredibly dangerous weapons. Not because they themselves do... Not because any one rocket does something crazy. But because they cause so much splash damage. And the splash damage, it hits everywhere. And every time you have to repair anything, including just a small amount of splash damage, it costs money to repair that. And what ends up happening is the rockets with all their massive amounts of splash damage just end up costing a repair bill that can't be can't be uh, paid with any amount of time and combine that with the now targeting of the mines uh, Dranistian no longer has the money to actually repair his base he's trying to extinguish the fires but that's going to be it Wait, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single series in the Forts Pro League. Because we've got explosions for days, and they're all for you. And we're off here to round two. The teams have been swapped here on the left-hand side. It is now Construct playing as the Eagle Eye Commander. Oh my. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Eagle Eye Commander. It allows you to store up your shots. So if you were to have a cannon round, a cannon, you can... Instead of firing it immediately, you can wait to ostensibly double reload it to double load your cannons. You can fire two shells in rapid succession, which just means you can burst fire your kinetics so, so very satisfyingly. It's, it makes me happy, and while I can only imagine that will be the strategy they will, go, they will be employing here, as Cloud and Teutonic are both starting off with what does seem to be standard build orders, getting tech first with a modicum of, uh, with a modicum of resource production along the way, but they're facing off against their opponents. It is Team Green Leaf who are going for definitely not a normal strategy, something unusual. They're playing as the Phantom Commander, which is already quite gimmicky, where 
Its active ability cloaks the forts so that the opponents can't see what they're doing uh, for the duration of it. And, more importantly, its passive ability enables a new feature. The ability to move around your devices and weapons anywhere you want at any time. Did you build a sniper in a spot? Oh, that's pretty. I'm going to move it somewhere else. And here we do see an example of where they're going to be using that as we have what appear to be missile launchers, or rockets, built inside deep within the base where they are protected. Yes, those are EMPs, and when Dranistine is ready, Dranistine will be moving them to a forward position where they are exposed and can be fired. This is, uh... This is a tech, this is a cheese. This is a dirty, filthy, disgusting cheese where Vicro and Dranistine... Oh, they've practiced this. They've both gone for the upgrade sensor triple EMP, and they are both going to be upgrading those almost immediately. Oh god, he's got four of them. Nope, that's three That's three EMPs he's going to turn into rockets and uh, one fog launcher. I assume Vicro is doing the same thing unless he's turning that one, unless he has that one as a shotgun. No. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's, got a, he's got a flag here, so he's going to turn that one into a shotgun, I can only assume. Here we do have what is just the token EMP. We have seen it before many a time, where the EMP isn't meant to cause serious damage. It's just meant to slow things down and just generally cause a mess. Quite effective. I do want to point out that this red structure here is what we call a fake structure. Um, it is not real. It is can be placed for free, uh, is built very quickly, destroyed even quicker, and in every way looks like a real structure to the opponents. So while we here in the Observer see it as red, uh, the opponents on Team Construct see it as a normal device. So what this is, is they are displaying that they are going for maximum economy in what otherwise appears to be a somewhat standard build. Um, that's not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing at all. This is, this is rocket spam. This is dirty, filthy rocket spam. And right now, Cloud has only just placed his howitzer, which is about on time. As we see Teutonic having placed his heavy laser just moments before. And suddenly, three rockets all the way across the sky. Targeting the top player, Cloud looks like to be the first victim, and that's an immediate removal. Six rockets and Cloud is eliminated. That caught them completely by surprise. They had no, and I repeat, absolutely no anti-air. They were completely unprepared and did not contest this at all. Because they just didn't see it coming. I mean, who would? As we have another volley preparing for both players. We notice here that Vicro, for safety reasons, because Vicro didn't have any kind of proper setup, um, for safety reasons has moved all of his his rockets back into the base where they are nice and safe. Uh, Dronistian also didn't protect his rockets from Kongstruck's sniper. He lost two. He, well, he lost the fog launch, the smoke launcher, and one rocket to the sniper. He was able to move the rest back deep into the base where they are safe. Well, simply be constructing a box for them to live in until... But until that is done... Oh, looks like the box is complete! They're cloaking, so now those bases are invisible to Team Construct. One machine gunner is trying so hard. Nice snipe. Dranistian actually wins the sniper duel. That's going to leave those rockets to fly largely unharassed across the world. Um, so, w we've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again for those who haven't, for those who are new here. Uh, rockets? Incredibly devastating. One of the highest DPS weapons in the game. Uh, their whole... Typically, rather than chunking through the base and destroying it outright, what they do is they drain the opponent of money. Uh, 
specifically because of how widespread they their hits and damage actually are uh, what ends up happening is it costs a lot to repair and then eventually they stop the, the target can't rebuild anymore and as we see here there's just a big open open wall in the uh, hole in the wall and the rockets fly in Hey, who is your favorite team? Comment down below to let us know who you are supporting. And we're off to the third and final match in this series. Here we have both teams going one to one, taking a point off each other. On the left-hand side, it is Team Green Leaf winning their last match to a dirty, filthy, and well-practiced cheese. It uh, looks like they're going for the Warthog Commander this time, so we're going to see heavy weapons and I suspect what is going to be a fairly standard build out of them. And they're facing off against their opponents. It is Team Kongstruct, playing as the the Scattershot Commander. Uh, Scattershot is well known. Uh, it is about as standard as it gets. Uh, let me rephrase. It doesn't play standard per se because it requires the liberal application of the 20 millimeter. However, it is ex so very common that it's everyone knows what's going to be happening there. The only question is, does Greenleaf know they're playing against Scattershot, or do they expect something a little bit more standard with the heavy weapons rush? And only one way to find out, and that's uh, time will tell. Otherwise, it looks like both teams are going for the highest eco option. Something that has been much more popular these days is opening up the front end, exposing all of the mines, but in exchange you get an extra mine, which means extra money, which is, you know, a good thing generally. It looks like we're going to be seeing the early game opening EMP out of Drinistian. We've seen that strategy a fair few times. You know it, you love it. Uh, Cloud might be doing the same thing as he's built a space for it. Um, I, I think I think Cloud is skipping that this time. So I suspect Team 2 won't be going with the EMP harass opener. Whereas Drinistian on Team Greenleaf will be going for that. Actually, interesting. Vicro is doing... Vicro has a buzzsaw. Buzzsaw to start has a very similar has a very similar role to play as the EMP. Um, however, it does so in a slightly different way, in that the EMP can just hit the opponent and will cause damage by virtue of slowing them down. Um, whereas the buzzsaw does nothing if the opponents are not being greedy, but if they are does crazy amounts of damage and here we see that buzzsaw hitting cloud and killing two sandbags which are ostensibly free so we don't get anything done with that i am curious to see what happens with the buzzsaw because especially now that that team construct knows that the buzzsaw exists uh, they're not going to be doing things exceptionally greedy at least that's typically how people react. They say, oh, there's a buzzsaw. Let me let me not react. Let, let me build in such a way that the buzzsaw can't punish me for it. Uh, we notice here that Teutonic also has a buzzsaw from Team Construct. And Team Green at Leafs Dranistian has built it a way that is vulnerable to the buzzsaw. Although, has just fixed it right now. So that is no longer the case. Um... I'm still curious to see how that plays out. This Vicro is temporarily vulnerable. Nope, not anymore. Yep. But uh, it's nothing to target there. Well, now there is one spot, which nope, that's that's sold up too. Okay, so the Buzzsaw won't be doing anything this this time around, but both teams keeping each other honest and what is looking to be what is shaping up to be about as standard of a match as it can get Ooh, close 
A little bit of deformation there. Got a little risky leaving that forward bit uncovered, but... It wasn't in real danger of having something catastrophic happening to him. Here we see the 20 mils in place of where the cannons would usually be. But these scatter shots, Commander changes 20 mils so that they, uh, during the Commander active, deal burst damage as opposed to scattered damage everywhere, turning them basically into cannons that can be built uh, for cheaper cost, which is extremely powerful and extremely well known. So we'll see that over. We we've seen that many a time, and. I assume Greenleaf now knows this, but Greenleaf is replying in kind. Using the Warthog active to overcharge their cannons, we're going to see cannons fired hard and deep into the opponent. Teutonic eating a couple shots, losing 4% on his core just because the upcharged cannon deals so much splash damage. That it will full charge the scatter shot ability, turning these 20s into shotgun blasts. Shotgun blasts that deal cannons amounts of damage. Oh, the double shot sniper, a second round should do it. And there it is. The cannon exposed by the 20s, followed up with the sniper, massive damage. Ooh. Well, despite the return fire. Wow. It, yeah, no, the, uh, the cannons with their overcharge. Their empowered cannon rounds, dealing pretty significant damage, actually overpenetrating Kongshuk's base, not dealing as much damage as it could because the overpenetration just means that it uh, didn't leave all of its damage around. Oh, that's devastating. Vicro. Oh no. Vicro getting targeted by 420 mils and the remnant of his base falling into Dranistian leaving nothing standing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, leaves Kongstruct with the victory and taking this series going 2-1 in this best of three. guys make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video and remember you can follow your favorite team on challenger mode to keep up to date with their scores and their progress through the forts pro league and until next time i'll see you guys later